For this lecture, we are going to discuss taste and smell. Okay, so the physical energy for the gustatory or taste system are these taste stents, okay, which are water soluble chemicals that produce a taste and sensation. The receptor cells are on the tongue and the receptor cells pick up tastes such as salty, sour, sweet, bitter, and umami. And flavors are a combination of taste and smell. Okay. So the sensory organ for taste is then gonna be the tongue. Okay. And there's papillae on the tongue that increases the surface area. And you can see that in the graphic on the left-hand side. There are three kinds of taste papillae. There is the circumvallate, there's foliate, and fungiform. Okay. Uh, taste buds are actually embedded in the papillae. So again, uh, looking at the figure on the left-hand side, uh, you see the taste buds that are um, down in the crevices of those papillae. Okay. And they extend... Uh, microvilli into a pore where they can contact taste dense. Okay? And then all areas of the tongue detect all five tastes. Uh, we, we need to talk about that for a minute because you've probably seen graphs or charts where they show the, the figure of the tongue and they show that um, taste is in one area of the tongue and bitters on a different area of the tongue, salties on this area of the tongue. That is no longer um, the belief. We know that that no longer is the case, um, that actually all areas of the tongue detect all five tastes. So if we look again on the right side of the figure, you'll notice uh, that this is one taste bud, okay? And you see the microvilli that are uh, extended out from that. And those come in contact with those taste dents, okay? So the microvilli here are gonna be the transducers for the gustatory system. They transduce those chemicals into something that can be um, understood by the brain. And we'll see how they do that in the next slide. Okay, okay so let's say for salty, okay? Sodium ions enter taste cells via sodium channels causing depolarization. We've seen a lot of that in our earlier chapters where we talked about depolarization, the, the idea that sodium channels or sodium wants in based upon the electrostatic gradient, based upon diffusion. Okay, so that one makes sense. Sour um, acids release hydrogen ions that taste sour. So that's how we pick up a sour taste. Okay. Um, Sour taste cells all seem to contain the same type of ion channel that allows an influx of protons, which depolarizes the cell again, okay, because they're positively charged ions. The same receptor detects carbonation in drinks as well. Uh, moving along, for sweet tastes, they are detected by specialized receptors, okay, on these uh, microvilli. Um, and I gave you the example there, but we're not going to go into more detail. It's just a T1R. Okay. Bitter, detected by specialized receptors as well. And high sensitivity to bitter evolved to detect poison, but individuals vary in their taste sensitivity. So a lot of things that um, are poisonous have a very, very bitter taste to them. And that is, uh, um, ha has evolved to protect us. Okay. Umami is a meaty, savory flavor, and it is detected by two types of receptors, okay? We have the met metabotropic glutamate receptors. Remember, glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter, and it is stimulated by monosodium glutamate, the MSG, which is a flavor enhancer, okay? And then a receptor that is a combination of subtypes of T1R. And these respond to most dietary amino acids. So those are going to be the amino acids that you get out of your uh, naturally occurring proteins. So the figure on the right-hand side shows you the taste strength scale and then breaks it down by the three different types of papillae, circumvallate, 
foliate and the fungiform. Okay. Um, so bitter is the highest for circumvallate as well as foliate, but not for fungiform. Fungiform is actually salty and umami for that one. Okay. Now let's look at the pathway then to the gustatory cortex. So we focused on the tongue. We know what the transducers are. We know what the physical energy is. Okay. So that message is then going to be processed through the nerves that you see there. Remember, these are nerves because they're outside of the central nervous system. Okay. Then they go to the brainstem nuclei or the solitary tract. Okay. Now it's in the central nervous system. So the, those nerve bundles are called tracts, solitary tract. Then it goes to the thalamus and from the thalamus to the gustatory cortex. Okay, and remember that thalamus is that switching station, uh, letting them know, letting the brain know that this is information that needs to go to the gustatory cortex. Okay, the brain may monitor which specific axons are active to determine which tastes are present. And other four tastes remain intact when receptors for one taste is inactivated. Not as much known about uh, this system as let's say the visual system. And so that's why you might read a language where it says may monitor, okay, which specific axons because it's not uh, fully understood at this time. Okay, now we get to switch gears and go to the olfactory system, okay? Physical energy and the sensory organ for smell. Okay? So inhaled molecules known as odorants interact with olfactory receptors. So odorants for olfaction for smell, and then the tastants um, is for gustatory or taste. Olfactory neurons are located in the epithelium. Uh, each is a complete neuron with a long dendrite and branches that extend into the mucosal surface. So you look at the figure on the right-hand side again, olfactory receptor cells, picking that up. You see the axons moving up into the olfactory bulb. Olfactory neurons differ from neurons of the brain. They have incredible diversity of receptor subtypes, which means that, uh, remember up to this point, we've talked about uh, dopaminergic receptor sites. So they're only going to be picking up dopamine, serotonergic for serotonin. Well, these have many, many receptor subtypes that they can uh, respond to. And they also die and are replaced in adulthood. Okay, so there is some uh, neurogenesis happening here. Each olfactory axon extends into the olfactory bulb of the brain. Again, you can see that in the figure. The axon terminates on a specific glomerulus, which receives information from one specific class of odorant receptors. Okay. So you'll notice those up there. Again, the olfactory cilia um, coming through that cribiform plate there, those are the transducers, guys. Again, they are picking up on odorants that activate those and then send the message on to the brain. So those are the transducers for the olfactory system. Uh, glomeruli or glomeruli are organized like a map. Okay? Olfacto, the olfactotopic organization is maintained throughout the brain. So we talked about this with the visual system. So retina topic okay, means that the retina um, is mapped in the occipital lobe, the, the primary visual cortex in a similar manner. And here we're seeing the same thing. Okay, but we call it the olfactotopic. All right, so what about the pathway to the olfactory cortex? Okay. Um, you can see it uh, best in the uh, figure on the right-hand side, but something that I wanna draw your attention to is actually the graphic on the left, okay? You see the olfactory receptors, Again, hanging down from that cribriform plate, those are the transducers. Their axons feed into the olfactory bulb. Now look at this though. The olfactory bulb, from there, they go immediately to the amygdala and the primary olfactory cortex. We have not seen this 
layout before. We have not seen this hierarchy before. Okay? And remember, the thalamus that we talk about is the switching station. So um, the th you know, most of these pathways go to the thalamus, then the thalamus shunts it over to its respectable area. That is not the case for the olfactory system. Okay? Olfactory bulb straight to the amygdala, straight to primary olfactory cortex. Then it can go to the hypothalamus. Then it can go to the medial dorsal thalamus. Okay. I get there is one area also there, guys, where it says where it shows olfactory bulb straight to hypothalamus. Okay. But there is no direct pathway from olfactory bulb to the thalamus. And okay. that's the important thing here. And then from either the hypothalamus or the thalamus, we're going to the orbital frontal cortex uh, for primary uh, olfactory cortex or secondary olfactory cortex. Okay. So we believe that because of this structure, because of this hierarchy, the olfactory system is really tied into um, uh, emotions, okay? Going from the olfactory bulb directly to the amygdala so that when we smell something and it, it's just, you know, uh, it, it's repulsive, right? I mean, we, we cringe and we have all of these adverse behaviors that we do when we smell something that that's not right. And that's probably because of this pathway. Okay. It's very quick for us to react to. So if you look at the figure on the right hand side again, you'll see the air, the odorants coming in. Okay. Um, being a and then you see the olfactory epithelium hanging down from that cribriform plate or bone. Those axons feed into the olfactory bulb and then from the olfactory bulb to the amygdala okay, um, and to primary olfactory cortex. Okay, so straight to amygdala and primary olfactory cortex. Okay, and I wanted to bring up this system also. We're not going to focus a lot of time on it, but it is something uh, um, of a lot of research nowadays, and that is the vomeronasal system. And the vomeronasal system detects pheromones, which are secreted odor signals. Okay. Receptors are found in the vomeronasal organ of the epithelial cells. Okay, so near the olfactory epithelium there, it's a, it's a kind of like a parallel um, path here going through the uh, epithelium. Vom vomeronasal receptors are very sensitive, so they can detect sex hormone metabolites. They can detect signals of genetic relatedness. Okay? And we've also discovered these trace amine associated receptors, okay? T-A-A-R-S. And they are a new class of olfactory receptors that respond to these pheromones. So the more we understand um, this system, the more uh, we, we realize how animals and stuff, they communicate, they seem to know um, from different smells and, and so on. And from these pheromones, you know, who's, who's a, a foe and who's a friend <laughs> kind of a thing. So it's gonna be interesting uh, to, to learn more about this system. But if we look at the figure on the left, you'll see again that uh, cribriform plate there and then the vermeronasal organ. It's just sitting right next to there. So parallel to that epithelium, okay? And then those nerves feeding up into um, the olfactory or the olfactory bulb and then uh, very, very close to the olfactory bulb called here the accessory olfactory bulb. Okay. And that is it for this lecture.